Hello, I'm Mr. Snapper. And I'm Red Snapper. And this is Project, Project Nutmeg. Nutmeg. Now with Coca. Coca. Oh, Coca. When we first started taking Nutmeg to class at Zoom Room, Bus and Coca would stay home and keep each other company. We weren't going to leave Coca home alone after Buster passed because, you know, no dog left behind. For the first month or so, I'd drop Red and Nutmeg off for class and then take Coca on a walk near classes. And then we'd go to Starbucks for a pup cup. There's a little daddy dog to date. But uh, Coca loves dogs and really enjoys training. So it was time to get her in on the action. Absolutely it was. Coca is very skilled with the tricks that her body can still do. I mean, she's 10, but she also has a fantastic sit-stay. Some might say it's best in class. <laughs> Some might. Certifiable. But she's 10, and she might be uncomfortable doing agility classes. She gets pretty tired pretty easily. We wanted to have her join Nutmeg for rally classes, but she needs to pass advanced obedience first. So she's successful working around other dogs. She's very successful working around Nutmeg. We may have mentioned that Coca loves dogs. She loves dogs and wants to become best friends with most of the dogs, most of the dogs she meets. In our first class, we decided to have the girls at opposite ends of the training room. We thought it might be less distracting for both mm -hmm. of them. And to be fair, Coca joins me for the evening training sessions with Nutmeg most of the time. So she looks to me for cues and commands. I am the source of the treats. Eventually though, we, we decided to keep the girls together because it was a lot easier. They could share a water bowl, for, for instance. And it was easy for us to pass. I could give you more snacks that, if you yeah, needed them. All the treats. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and honestly, keeping them apart only really made them more curious about what the other dog was doing. Mm -hmm. What are you doing on the other side of the room? Yeah, why well, I need to go over there. And Coca's doing really great. She really, really is. So the first time she did training back in Los Angeles, uh, you were her handler. Mm -hmm. Coca was very attentive, very quick to learn, and she loved working. And not much has changed. She loves to work and she's she's super smart. Yeah, she is. I mean, maybe she's not as attentive. She's old and stubborn. <laughs> well, who isn't? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We're all a little bit older and all a little more stubborn. Even this thing. Yes, that's for sure. She's all of two years old. Getting and maintaining Coca's attention can be tricky. She's interested in other dogs, like we said. In class, we work on walking around different distractions, the leave it command, similar skills where it's about getting her attention and keeping it. And with each class, she's improved. And the trick really is, it's all on me, right? So I have to be engaged with her. She has to have my full attention if I have any hope of getting her full attention. It's true. It's the same with Nutmeg. Training really is a partnership. You're wonderful. You're working with the dog. You're doing it together. And it can be exhausting, you know, for the dog and the trainer. There comes a point in class where my 10 year old is done with certain things. I only get, I, I only get so many downs before she just starts ignoring the command. And toward the end of the period, the training period, if I, if I start getting frustrated, I know I'm getting tired too. So you said something the other day when I was trying to get her to do a trick and she just wasn't. You said like something like let her win, something like that. You have to let the dog win. If they're not getting it, not executing a command, it's not their fault. Either you're not communicating clearly what you want them to do or you've jumped past the point where they are skill-wise, or you're pushing them out of their comfort zone. It is never the dog's fault. You can't blame the dog for that. You can blame them for farts. Just don't, yeah. just don't blame them for missed tricks. Right, I, so if that happens, stop. You know, dial it back. Get them to do something they know how to do and reward them profusely. Take a break and come back to it when you're both feeling refreshed. 
Win win. Win. That's all we have for today. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. And while you're clicking on things, boop that bell for notifications. Absolutely. Do that very thing. And talk to us in the comments below. Have you taken your older dog to obedience classes? Are you curious about working with an older dog? We would love to hear from you. And you'll see us next time. Bye. Bye.